This is the video. This is the video where Sm Trash JT pays 10000 for a Ferrari ride. This video is called Tommy Tallarico Answers Your Intellivision Amico Questions from His Ferrari. These are not the questions that we asked. These are the predetermined questions that Trash JT wrote. Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. In this episode, I sit in a Ferrari and go for a ride with the one and only Tommy Tellerico. By the way, the thing about Ferraris is to buy Ferraris, you need to be in the Ferrari club. To be in the Ferrari club, you need to buy older versions of the Ferrari. Once Ferrari sees that you have bought older versions of Ferraris before and you're a loyal Ferrari customer, then they will sell you the new Ferraris that come out. So that's what Scamaroni was. If you look at his old pictures when he was younger, you see him in pictures with a car. It's a Ferrari. It's an old version of the Ferrari. So that's why Scamaroni always rides around with like Ferrari sunglasses, Ferrari watch, Ferrari car, Ferrari this, because he's in the club and they only give Ferraris to loyal customers. Go of Intellivision, finding out some information about the upcoming Intellivision Amico console. Special thanks to Super Nintendo for providing some of these questions. There is some exclusive information released here. So have a seat and relax. Worry, You're I not going to want to miss this one. Ready for exclusive information? Let's listen. Train professional. The, the, the 10K. That's what the 10K was for. Acceleration. How will you guarantee having a steady stream of exclusive releases for the first year of the console's lifespan? Steady stream of releases? For God's sakes, can you release one release for, for, the, for the Amico? Can we play one thing that's officially released? The way we're going to have a steady stream of exclusives is that what people, a lot of people don't realize and understand is in this market, in this day and age, indie developers, to which there are tons of talented ones, they either have to get a Kickstarter to make money, to, to, to make a game, or they have to bootstrap everything with their own money. And television comes to them and says, hey, we love your idea. We want to do it exclusive for our console. We'll pay you everything up front. And that's where all the money went for the from the crowdfunding, from the investments, from the heritage thing, from kick, whatever that was. That's where all the money went. They took the money, Scamaroni pocketed all that stuff for some of most of that stuff for himself, and all the rest was just given to Whipping and Wasted Studios for freaking Germany. These idiots developing that stupid game that sucked. That's it. And I'm sure there were there were other developers that signed up for this and they got nothing. So this is all lies. They nothing. None of this ever happened. But that's where all the money went and wasted was stuff like this. You don't have to do a Kickstarter. You don't have to do. There is zero financial risk to them. But yeah, you don't have to have any credibility in the video game industry. You have to have no skill. Just pr friggin' come to us, make a crappy game like friggin' MLB or Bomb Squad, and that's it. It gets better. We'll give you as much help as we can to make the thing. So if you don't have a full in-house audio guy, we'll give you the audio. You need to figure out how to optimize your code on our system, we'll we'll set our programmer. Yeah, they'll send friggin' Alvocado in a pirate ship to Germany, where Hans Ippisch is friggin' taking vacations in Egypt, and Alvocado's somehow gonna fix the code. That's not gonna happen. On your lap for, for a, a month if we need. And, and how hard is it to build a game as simple as these games that were being made? It's so easy. You can be you can make Astro Smash in a day. You can make Bomb Squad in a friggin' day. Everything is made so simple and easy, yet they still couldn't get their act together and finish the damn games. Another great thing is the marketing, right? So we become partners with you. And the promise that we make is that we'll never come out with more than two Intellivision games at the same time. Yeah, can I at least get one Intellivision game once in a lifetime? You're here talking about two games at a time, steady stream of games. Can I get one game released from Intellivision? For God's sakes, shown to the public and played. And we're not talking about those controlled events like Crayola in Boston, where you only invite people that are going to shill for the damn system and say it's good. I want real testing with real gamers. So what that means is, when that developer's game comes out on our system, which we've paid for 100%. No, which you guys paid for, your guys' investments, your guys' deposits, your guys' money that you put into it, you guys paid for friggin' Wasted Studios to make that crappy game. 
It's they'll highlight it. It will be the highlight. And that is not something that EA or Activision... And then as you got the freaking government funding from Belgium or Germany, whatever it was. All that money went into the freaking Intellivision. Or Ubisoft can buy. Everybody gets that. Whether you're a dorm room developer with two guys on your team or you're a team of 50 people. So I can tell you that hundreds of talented developers from around the world are lining up to do games for us. That's <laughs> a hundred of developers around the world are lining up to Intellivision. Because Intellivision is the best thing that's ever happened. It has a nice controller, the best friggin' unique controller that's never been thought of. It looks like a foot bath. I can't wait to make games for the Intellivision Amico. That's the first thing on my mind. I'm making shovelware for a system that's $400. Just my follow-up is how are you going to select, because you don't have the amount of manpower for, if that's the case, hundreds of developers. How are you going to pick and choose who gets the help and when? We have they sure have the office space for 100 developers. Did you ever see that? The office that they had that shut down? It's, all, it's, it's being listed as uh, they're, they're trying to sell it for rent. Yeah, that, they have the office space for 100 developers, but all they needed was just one crappy room. Okay, with avocado there and this greasy leprechaun telling you what to do to make shovelware. We have 50 top developers right now. And that'll bring top developers, wasted studios, a bunch of German idiots from Germany that don't know what they're doing. Into 2021 and launch. And then once they're done with those games, those 50 developers work on they Our developers love us. Love us, love us, love us. Are you going to develop a system for applications for small indie developers to apply to be a developer for it if it's as successful as... Yeah, as any it. developer interested in developing a game for us now, they can go to just send an email to info at intellivision.com. By the way, you can send an email to support at intellivision.com to get your refund back, which is taking forever. You have to beg them to get your refund back. Whatever email they have now, support or refund at intellivision.com. Go email that instead and get your money back. Because you're this this console is just I don't know. I'll I'll, I'll go get into it later on. And then we have a process to go through to approve it. Oh, and by the way, we give all the dev kits for free. We don't charge you like Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft do. Yeah, because if you did charge people to, for the dev kits, no one would try to attempt to make games for your crappy system. You had to give them incentive to make shovelware games because even the devs knew themselves that this thing's not going to last with a crappy controller and crappy games. Oh, uh, you're going to give it to us for free? Might as well, if I have free time, try to make a game on the side to see if this thing might be successful, then make the devs money. That was the whole reason for the free dev kits. When you're a partner with us, you get them for free. Again, zero financial risk. And like as a side job for a developer, like you can, you can, you can uh, hire, uh, you can have third part, uh, you know, third world countries like India. So people that do software development, which they're really smart at in India at the real job. And as a side job, oh, I know how to make shovelware games. Yeah, I might as well just try to make games for Intellivision. That was a thought process behind it. We're paying you to make your dream. We're paying you with your money that you guys funded that are watching here, the Amico cult. Friggin' Brett Weiss, Saggy Melons, DJ Cuck, uh, Parental Advisory Board, Geeks with Rash, Trash JT, Retro Ho, aka 90s Reloaded, OEB Pete, aka Pack Opening Pete, aka Retro Canadian, whatever the hell that is. Friggin', I don't know, Mike Molest. Like, you are the people paying for it. And that's where the money went is to developers. The controller looks unconventional. How will you convince people unaware of Intellivision to give it a try? That's a great question. Um, it's unconventional to hardcore gamers. Lie. It's not, it, doesn't ha it has nothing to do with hardcore gamers, casual gamers, no gamers. It has nothing to do with that. The funny thing is, it's the hardcore gamers that are good at games that can easily pick up this controller and play any game and adapt to the lag, adapt to the touchscreen, adapt, adapt to the disc, D-pad. Hardcore gamers can adapt quickly. Once hardcore gamers adapt quickly to it, realize the controller sucks, it's not needed, it's a friggin' gimmick, 
to play shovelware games. Then we're going to come out and say the games suck and the controller sucks. The casual gamers are the ones having problems with the damn controller because it's too confusing for them to use and they suck at the games. You saw Brett Weiss try to play Moon Patrol. That's a perfect example. The guy's freaking holding the controller here, shaking it while playing it, can't even jump or shoot, can't even decide in his mind in a millisecond whether to jump or shoot. So that's the whole point. It has nothing to do with hardcore gamers, casual gamers, normal gamers. No, it's just gamers in general, okay? Think the controller is garbage. Because they look at our controller and they go, how the hell am I going to play Call of Duty and Fortnite on that, right? But those aren't the style of games that they're doing. The, the reason the Wii became so popular, because when the Wii was first announced, everybody hated it, Hard, especially hardcore gamers. They're like, what the hell is that going to be about? This is, What a fail. Nintendo's dead. What idiots. How did Nintendo overcome that? They put it in people's hands. False, okay? Even I have a Wii, I have the Wii controller. I hate the Wii controller. I hate having to hold the damn controller like this. My forearm and shoulder is getting tired holding it up like this. I hate doing that. So what did what did Nintendo do? They came out with the uh, the classic controller. I instantly plugged that classic controller in and I play with that instead. Every game on the Wii, I use the con classic controller to play. I have never, I have only once used the Wii controller and that was to play Resident Evil 4, just to try it out. And my arm was constantly tired with it, constantly. I hated doing it. But every other game on friggin' Wii, I play with the classic controller. And also, uh, only some games have that whole point and thing the point and shoot feature of the Wii. Like games like Donkey Kong, you can just put the controller sideways and play it like a D-pad. That's the way you're supposed to play it, right? That's the whole point. So this whole idea of that, okay, then Nintendo put it in the people's hands. No, it's because Nintendo has a trademark and a, a brand that's catered toward kids and parents that are idiots always think like, okay, Nintendo's for kids. Let me buy a Nintendo for my child. I have cousins that aren't into gaming at all. Not at all. And they just bought Nintendo Wii for the, uh, back in the day, they bought Nintendo Wii for their kids because they just got marketed as that, as commercials, as it being a family friendly. And they don't know anything about games. So it has nothing to do with the actual controller. It has everything to do with the brand. So that's what you tried, Scamroni. You tried with the Intellivision brand to get people cucked that are neckbeards, that are nostalgic about a stupid Intellivision thing. And they're the ones that are actually driving your television forward. Are people that are simping over the Intellivision brand, they're the biggest uh, you know, cheerleaders for this thing. So that's, ex that's what you tried to do, and it failed because everything else failed within it. Like the controller sucked, the game sucked. People can just see through YouTube videos, uh, through, through everything you show, that the games are nothing special, they're trash. At least Nintendo has good games to go with their crappy controller. Yeah, they, you know, they, they have the Donkey Kong, the Mario, the, all that other stuff, Mario Kart. They have good games that you still want to play. You have freaking Shark Shark, Astro Smash, Moon Patrol, Dino Blaster, which is every one of your games is a clone of another game that could be downloaded right now for free or for a dollar or bought on the eShop or Steam for two bucks. Right? People had to play bowling in order to, for it to feel it. Well, we're doing the same thing. So in all the retail stores across... Yeah, people had to play bowling to use it, but people didn't buy the Wii for bowling. People bought the Wii for being an, a family-friendly system that had brands like uh, Mario and Donkey Kong. It had, like, you know, big developers, Capcom, Connect. All these big companies were making games for the Wii. That's why people bought the Wii. Not because you can take a freaking controller and do bowling with it. No one cares. The world... We'll have in-store displays with people on the ground showing it. We're doing mall tours. We're going, we're doing major celebrity endorsements. <laughs> major celebrity endorsements for the Amico in television. Hell no. The only celebrity that you could have got a chance to endorse this is your cousin, Steven Tyler from the Rolling Stones. That's the only one that could have done. Who what other celebrity would be smart enough, okay, to actually endorse this foot bath? The only people you did end up getting for a temporary point point of time was review tech usa who has a big following he he you tried to make him shill for it and then he came to his senses after when pat and ian called him out saying you didn't ask any questions then friggin review tech usa had to go back and ask questions then he got blackballed and tried to get canceled by scammeroni then what scammeroni does is that he goes for these young these low-level YouTubers with low subscriber base to try to get them to shill for the system because these YouTube channels know that if I shill for the system and it gets big and I'm a friend with Tommy, then my channel is going to grow big, then 
and AKA, I'm going to get money and monetize and all that stuff. Big example of this, Brett Weiss, that e-bagger, buy my book, buy my Patreon. That guy is a perfect example of this. And then when he couldn't get free games, he stopped shilling for the system. Retro bro, retro ho, that's another perfect example. Trash JT is another example of someone who shilled for something that sucks in just to hopes to being friends with Tommy, being connected with Tommy, networking with Tommy, 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 Tommy. We need to put the controller in people's hands. We're not crowdfunded. We're not asking you for money. To That's exactly what you did. You crowdfunded and asked people for money. And you basically threatened people saying, if we don't get the money, we're not going to come up with a system. So you put people in a very bad position to try to get more money out of it. When friggin' Phil Adam, you didn't even have a plan and what to do after he raised all that money. You exactly crowdfunded. You exactly said, okay, deposit, $100 deposit, whatever, refundable to uh, pre-order the system. People can't even get their money. That's exactly what you did. Pay before you buy the console. We want you to play the console first. See how we're creating the games around that controller. We're creating games around the controller. We're not trying to make a, a first-person shooter and then make it to our controller. The, con the games, the way they're being designed and developed, are around our controller. So I just say to everybody out there, keep a complete open mind. Don't make a judgment until you have had a chance to play it. No, I could make a judgment by watching YouTube videos of what you're trying to sell us. I can see that the price is too high. I can see that the controller is a gimmick. I can see that there's lag on the controller when people play it. I can see that the games are shovelware. I can see I can, I'll never see myself playing Shark Shark, Cornhole, and all those other games. I would never see myself playing that and wasting my time on it. That's my judgment. I don't need to have the thing in my hand. And if I did have the thing in my hand, I would still say it sucks. Say it to your face. And then you would cancel me on YouTube. You'd cancel me in real life. And you say, never come back to my events again. I would like you to hold a public event where people can join. But every public event that you had was controlled with people that you knew that would chill for the system. And I can tell you that all the people who have played it have absolutely loved it. And, and, and it goes off in their head. They go, aha. Yeah, the people that have played it and loved it are neckbeard and television cucks that friggin' don't know how to play games that just want to be your friend. These are the people that are agreeing that the game is good and the controller is good. I get it now. Now I understand why a bunch of people in a room with screens and they all have their own information and why the speaker and the microphone and the touch screen and the colors on the system... I, now I get it. It all makes sense. Don't you think that video game co uh, companies, uh, video game system companies like Nintendo, PlayStation, Microsoft, don't you think that they did tests to see all the gyro stuff and the, you know, saying sound in your controller? If, they, if that was a good idea, don't you think it would be in every controller right now? Okay. Nintendo Famicom had the friggin' sound thing where you scream or yell into the controller to kill a pole's voice in the first zelda why is it that when it came out in america they took away that feature what was the reasoning behind going backwards in their mind in your mind and taking away the whole sound thing because it didn't work it was too much it's stupid idea and you don't need to do it to play a simple game if your idea is so important it makes so much sense every controller right now would have those features but they don't because video game companies, uh, companies know, system companies know that it's a stupid feature. It's too much. It's a gimmick. Just put the damn controller in my hand with a simple D-pad and, and buttons and let me play a game without, ha without having to look down at my screen and seeing if everything's okay and seeing if things are color coded in Shark Shark so I can open up a clam and eat the damn clam. And by the way, the controllers that you've seen aren't our final controllers either. So we've changed where the buttons are located. We've changed a bunch of different things. And when people see it and they play it, then they'll understand. They, they change a bunch of things on their controller. All you see is them doing the stupid tumble experiment with their controller, tumbling it with the tumbler that's at their in, in television office that isn't there anymore. And then you see them doing the stupid pressure test, pressing the button of 5 million times on the controller. Like who cares? That's all you have to show is like, oh, it's so, it's so special. We're doing big tests on this crap. So it's a great question. And I, I completely understand the pause that people may have. And that's my answer for you is that when you play it and see it, 
you'll get it. The Intellivision namesake hasn't been attached to anything for over 30 years. Do you think this will impact the console's visibility on store shelves? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. See, we're not relying on the Intellivision name and nostalgia to sell the console. That's this exactly what you relied on. That's exactly what coincidentally was the fact. It was the people that were pushing this product of the Amico over and over and over were people that were nostalgic of the, either nostalgic about the Intellivision from back then, like OEB Pete and friggin' Brett Weiss and DJ Cuck Studios and friggin' Parental Advising or Geeks with Rash. If you're one of them that's nostalgic about the Intellivision, then you're gonna push this nonstop, okay? It's an old brand with crappy games that no one cares about, and those are the people pushing it. Or on the other side, you're like a shirtless shill like Trash JT, Retro Bro, friggin' that shill, People that haven't never used to play the Intellivision back then because they're a younger crowd and they're just shilling for this thing for channel growth. They're shilling for this thing because they think Tommy's his friend. That was their two crowds. This is a brand new console. The fact that the Intellivision name is with it and the people who, we have four people who work for Intellivision. Then you came out that you said you had that one guy from Microsoft. I think his name was Jay Allard, whatever, that uh, showed up with uh, Mike from Microsoft, the guy who made the Halo, whatever. And they're like, oh, we have him on our team. You just announced it. Then it came, then Trash JT exposed the fact that that one day Jay Allard came. I think that's his name. I might be wrong. Jay Allard came to the office, walked around, looked around. He was like, yo, this is so trash. And then just left. Okay. And then when Trash JT confronted Scammeroni, Tommy Scammeroni, and said, why did Jay Allard just come and leave? And then Scammeroni makes up a story like, yeah, he has a lot of things to do. Don't worry about that. Let's just play these games, you cuck. You're cucked by me. Play these games and shill for my product, you idiot. Thanks for the 10K. Uh, JT met a couple of them. We have four people who work for Intellivision. They started in 1981. So this isn't some company that's been sold and resold a thousand times. The DNA of the company is still there and the passion is still there in the office. But having the- The passion is there in the office. Did you see the games? You see how much trash they are? Television name. See, what was important about Intellivision when I was growing up was that it brought people together family friends playing every system back in the day the time during in television atari whatever other uh systems were every system back in the day brought families together because it was a new thing on the market we never had a thing marketed toward the main mainstream and the main population of a video game system that you can play so of course parents and of course kids would be curious to play together and see what everything is and oh my god is is it fun or whatever that you cannot do that in this day and age when people know ultimately that if you're not doing video game stuff for a career, ultimately video games are a waste of time. If you're not streaming video games, you're not doing it as any kind of like content creation. Ultimately, it is a waste of time to play video games. So parents are not going to waste time in their day when there's a fl inflation, taxes are going up, house prices are whatever doing this. You can't even buy a house now. All this stuff going on in the world. Parents are not going to waste time out of their day to sit down and play Shark Shark or eight-player Finnegan Fox. Simple games. That's really the only thing that we've carried over. That and the, the, the idea of a disc, although our disc is very much different and, and advanced, 40 years of technology, we're going to get... How are you talking about 40 years of technology in a stupid disc? There's a reason why the disc isn't being used. If the disc was so good... Other companies like Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony would be using a disc, okay? There's a reason the disc is not used, because it's trash. Uh, here comes a fire truck. Hello. Okay. So there it goes. <laughs> um, but our disc is in the technology... The trash JT annoyingly laughs after he says fire truck. The trash JT is so cucked. He's so simping over Tommy Tallarico. It's just ridiculous. He's just a piece of trash that has no backbone and actually saying real questions and telling us the real information. So we're using it much more advanced. So, so absolutely it's going to be on retail shelves and store shelves. And, but we don't think that the Intellivision name, it's not going to live or die by that. It's just a cherry on top. It's a bonus. I could have called it anything and it wouldn't have mattered. 
but the fact that I... That's a lie. You had to call it Intellivision so it would matter. So all these Intellivision cucks out there that are cucked by Intellivision, they would shill for the system. If you called it anything else, if you didn't have the Intellivision brand to this, no one would even care about this footbath of a system. No one would care about your game. It's the Intellivision brand that is tricking people and manipulating people to shill for the system. Because some reason they think that their 70s nostalgia coming back now makes them feel special. Someone like Mike Molest. So passionate about Intellivision. The fact that Intellivision was about friends and family in a room and, and bringing people together and playing fun, simple games, that's a bonus, right? So that, that's what it's about. Intellivision name uh, it, it is the cherry on top. Will it be sold in brick and mortar stores like Target, etc.? And if so, how many colors will be available at launch? That's a great question. Uh, yes, absolutely. Every single place that sells brick and mortar, big box retailers will all have Amico on store shelves. Yeah, good luck trying to tell these stores that, hey, this Amico is worth 400 bucks, okay, for crappy shovelware. Please put this in your damn uh, store. No one is going to take a hold of this. GameStop friggin' canceled the whole contract that they had with friggin' Amico after they found out this thing wasn't going to release. This like, this complete lie. It's not lies, technically. These are announcements. Like I said in my last video, politicians do the same things. They announce things, so technically they don't have to go through with it because it was just an announcement, okay? That's Scamaroni is doing, doing the same thing here. He's just announcing that it's going to have 50 games released or 50 developers. He's announcing that this thing's going to show up in this store and this store. So technically, if it doesn't happen, he's not legally in the fault because he just announced it. Day one. Um, but we can also sell to unconventional places where folks like Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo can. So places like Bed Bath & Beyond or QVC. Bed Bath & Beyond. Why the hell would you want to sell the Amico at Bed Bath & Beyond? Like, what, what, what is the idea behind that? Places where moms shops and Kohl's. family shops, Kohl's. Places where moms shop and family shop, so they're going to sell an Amico in Bed Bath & Beyond. Like, that is the stupidest idea. Moms are in there trying to get friggin', you know, decor or something for their washroom or some sort of you know, shelf or something for their house to pay basically, you know, maximum, maybe 30 bucks, everything. You're not going to go in there, see Amico's for 400 bucks. And the mom's going to be like, Oh, look, son, there's a friggin' Amico here. Shovelware games. Let me just shell out 400 bucks to buy you this system. Like that's just ridiculous. That's the stupidest idea ever. Why did any of you Amico cult members that you question this? Like, why the hell are you going to try to sell this at bed bath? You know what the funny thing is? This is how my mind works. Okay. Like this is, this is the, I like to look at things in a subliminal way because a lot of things in mainstream media, in the news, uh, in the world are told at you subliminally. So technically they do tell you the truth, but your subliminal mind can't register it, right? So that's just the way the world works, I think, okay? That everything's subliminal and they can get away with it because they told you it, but in a subliminal way because that side of your brain hasn't registered it. You can't decipher it. I just think it's funny how the Amico is joked on as being a foot bath. And he's, tell he's talking about selling Amico at Bed Bath & Beyond where you would actually find a real foot bath to buy for 30 bucks. I just think that's funny. Like, I, I, think, Scam I think Tommy Scamaroni had a time of his life doing this whole Intellivision fiasco thing. All the money that he's made, all the people that you know, he tricked, all the people that were under his power. Because remember, when you're, when you're at this level of, uh, of a person in this world where you have so much money, at, at one point, money gets boring. You, you buy, like, everything gets boring in this world, right? If you're born, in, like, as an oil prince or something, and you're born with a lot of money, buying a Ferrari is nothing to you. Nothing brings you joy with money because you already have money. When you make a lot of money like this guy, nothing, at, the, at, at the end of the day, when you buy things, nothing's hap like, nothing makes you happy buying stuff with money. So what do these people want at the end uh, when they have a lot of money? They go for power. Power is their driving force in life. They want power. They want influence. They want all that. So imagine the power trip Scamaroni had, having cult members shill, openly shill for a system, having people openly donate or uh, uh, you know invest money into them. Uh, perfect example, Trash JT with 10K. Imagine the power trip this guy had, having all these idiots 
you know, trying to uh, shill for the system. The power trip he had going against people, the anti-Amico cult on forums, saying, you guys are wrong, you're liars, blah, blah, blah. Imagine the power trip and the fun Scamroni had in this whole fiasco. So I respect him for that, for taking money out of stupid people that were tricked. And I hope that taught them a lesson. I hope it taught people like the Sally Soccer Mom or Joe Sixpack on friggin', you know, the heritage investment that only invested maybe 500,000 bucks. I hope that taught them don't ever just invest in something right away because of the whole marketing or there's a greasy leprechaun here trying to sell you something, okay? But thank God you took 10 KOA from Trash JT, that shirtless shill, because he hella deserved it. Places like this will also be able to carry Amico, and um, you know, so we're, we're, we're places unconventionally that video games are not sold. Um, so absolutely there from day one. Now in regards to the colors, we don't know exactly how many colors were- Okay, the colors. This is the only thing that they actually worked on and completed, was finding out the colors for the damn foot bath. Galaxy purple, uh, pitch black, wood grain, Ferrari red. Like these are the colors that they worked on so hard. And this was the only thing they worked on and the only thing they perfected was the damn colors. Gonna have on launch, you know that we're gonna at least have five because we've, we've done that. And some of those, the basic models, and this is exclusive, I haven't talked about this before, the basic models are black and white. Those are the basic models uh, that, are, that all stores will be able to, to carry. But the vintage wood grain, the GTO red with black carbon fiber, I wonder where that idea came <laughs> from, uh, and, and the galaxy purple, those will be special limited edition Thank models. God that will only be available at certain retailers. Thank God. Please take my deposit money right now so I can get a Galaxy Purple and a Ferrari. DJ Cuck Studios orders like three foot baths, all, all the, every single color available for pre-order. That guy is an absolute idiot cucked by Scamaroni. He still to this day with this Amico Forever panel with parental advisory board and geeks with rash, they're still shilling for the system even after they announced that the offices has closed down. It's just ridiculous. One of them is gonna be direct through our, our own website as well. Now they might be a little more money as well because they, they're, they're, you know, it's real wood grain or it's real carbon fiber or to get that, you know, m metallic, amazing, so uh, this... iridescent paint job. Can you just take all this passion you have for the colors and actually work on the system and actually work on the games, work on the lag, work on the friggin' user face, work on the friggin' settings menu that all looks the same. Can you take all this passion about the decals of the damn car? Friggin, just give me an Amico, a white Amico. I'll put my own vinyl stripe on it, make it look like a car. Thank God, okay? Just damn, finish the damn games. It's more expensive. Give so, people their money back. So some of those are going to be more expensive. The limited edition ones will be a little more expensive. But the but the core black and white editions, the, uh, the uh, obsidian black and the metallic pearl white, those will be available everywhere. Oh my God, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Here's the ride that's trashed JT. He literally paid 10,000 to go on a Ferrari ride with him in this video and ask him questions that were predetermined with predetermined answers to show, to try to confuse or try to debunk YouTube when it comes to the Amico that it is the actual real system. No, it's not a real system, okay? They came out and it was all wrong. It was all fake. Everything was lies. There were all the announcements. Scamaroni on a power trip. Scamaroni laughing. That greasy leprechaun with his pot of gold on Avocado's pirate ship going straight to the Cayman Islands for a vacation. Hans Ippish in friggin' Egypt going to see the pyramids on your investment money. Friggin' taking money from the German or Belgium government over the whole um, disease that was out in the world. Okay. Took that money to fund the stupid Intellivision game thing. German Wasted Studios Four or five idiot developers that don't know what the hell they're doing. They're sitting around there thinking they're so good making that stupid, what a space attack, whatever that game was. Brett Weiss showing us how much of a bad gamer he is playing Moon Patrol. And it's just completely trash of a gamer. You can see that the controller has lag and it's not viable in a real life situation. 
Friggin' Finnegan Fox, DJ Cuck's jaws dropping to the ground, seeing Finnegan Fox, a friggin' shovelware game that is available right now. It's called Fox and Forest. You can go and download it right now and play it, okay? Dino Blaster, basically a Bomberman clone. You want to play Bomberman? Go play Bomberman, okay? Go play Bomberman, have the time of your life. All these games, MLB, friggin' Hot Wheels, uh, whatever that thing. Cyrus Martin's brains turn into Swiss cheese looking at friggin' Uh, hot wheels and skiing 10 levels of skiing thank god you have 10 levels of skiing because if it was nine i would not have gotten my money's worth 10 levels is enough all right i've had enough this is just ridiculous i'm gonna keep these videos are hilarious to make fun of idiots like trash jt paying ten thousand for a ferrari ride hope it was worth it peace